What is going on everyone? In this video we are talking about two of the many PvP systems in Ashes of Creation, that being Castle Sieges and Node Sieges. The team on Ashes of Creation has a vision, and that is to make player versus player combat meaningful again. And that doesn't just mean via instance battlegrounds, no, you won't find many of those in Ashes of Creation, instead you will find engaging progression driven reasons to go out against another player or group of players in the world of Vera. But keep in mind as the game is in early alpha, all of this info I'm about to tell you is subject to change. There are two different types of sieges in Ashes of Creation, Node Sieges and Castle Sieges. Castle Sieges occur once a month and are a way for guilds to occupy territories within Vera. There are five castles to capture in the world and to take one of these won't be an easy feat, as these are planned to be a minimum of 250 versus 250 player battles. But Intrepid is aiming to up the scale for 500 versus 500 at some point. Battles these sizes are unheard of for non-instance PvP fights and it will be a huge undertaking for Intrepid to get this right. But even with battles that size, it will cause large amounts of planning by guilds to go up against an army and come out successful. Castle Sieges will start out by guilds registering for a siege, which a quest is then initiated for guild members to partake in. Although the details are minimal on this quest, soon after it is completed, a guild may lay the Declaration of War scroll down, and the first to lay this down out of all the guilds attempting to siege will be able to begin having their members register for attack. The scroll will be a 5 minute rooted cast that the guild master must place alerting everyone in the region that a cast has been initiated. And this cast will be interrupted if the guild leader dies. And once a war is declared the defender will have a week's time to prepare in ways such as approving those people who have applied to defend and hire mercenary NPCs along with setting up defensible positions. As the war begins the attacking side will attempt to capture waypoints within the castle to diminish their respawn timer and increase that of the defending side. Whereas the defending side would obviously defend these points along with being able to attack the siege headquarters of the attackers to increase the attackers respawn timers. The defending side will need to survive the siege for roughly 90 minutes although this number could change before we reach launch while the attacking side will need to reach the inner keep of the castle and a guild leader will need to cast a 3 to 5 minute long spell to seal ownership of the castle, and the casting time of this spell is being dependent on the amount of waypoints captured during the siege. Along with this, during the siege, both attacking and defending sides will be able to create or purchase various siege weapons to put on the battlefield. When the siege is over, whoever is victorious gains control of the castle and the node attached to it. These nodes are all military nodes that can't be leveled up past stage 3 and the guild leaders whom were victorious will be referred to as kings or queens. The second type of siege being node sieges. These enable players to attack and destroy nodes, paving the way for new development in the world and unlocking different content as there is only so many nodes that can progress in each server and you may lock or unlock content depending on which ones get developed. Sieging a node can be declared by any player who meets the prerequisites of the initiation. This is done by players receiving a certain item that is acquired through a quest. Once a player has that item, it must be brought to the node that's being sieged and activated, in which the declaration period begins and the region is alerted to what is coming. During this declaration period, any individual or guild can register to attack, whilst the node itself has a set number of days to prepare, which is based off the node's level, being two days for a village stage, three days for a town stage, four days for a city, and five days for a metropolis. If the node has not yet reached village stage, it cannot be destroyed. During this time, many of the node services will be shut down and replaced by preparation quests for the siege. Players who have anything stored in the node will not be able to move any items out of the node while in this time period, 
preventing players from wiping out all of the rewards that the attacking team could possibly get. To take a node, you will need to defeat raid boss guard NPCs in each of the districts of the node. When the attacking side defeats the boss, they will take over that district and gain it as a spawn point, which increases the respawn timer of the defenders. These events can last up to two hours, and if you are successful at attacking, the node will be destroyed. A portion of all materials and gatherables stored within the node become lootable, and the node will be reverted back to level 0, which is the wilderness stage, allowing for other nodes to further progress. If the node survives though, there will be a cooldown before it can be sieged again. 20 days for a village, 30 days for a town, 40 days for a city, and 50 days for a metropolis, and citizens will also need to obtain resources to rebuild any damage. Keep in mind, node sieges are meant to be very, very challenging. A lot goes into leveling up a node, and a lot will need to be put into taking these guys down. What are your thoughts on node and castle sieges in Ashes of Creation? Let me know in the comments down below, and be sure to stay tuned as part 2 of my PvP videos will be coming out later this week, talking about caravans and arenas. If you're one of the many players who is new to Ashes of Creation and want to jump in on the forums or purchase some of the amazing cosmetics, feel free to sign up using my referral link in the description below, otherwise be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, and stay tuned for a lot more to come.